Now, don't get me wrong. If you've been watching this YouTube channel for the entire 2021 Vancouver Canucks season thus far, you know that I have been one of the most critical people of JT Miller this entire year. Oh, the guy's going out there. He is swearing too much. Oh, he's got this attitude, and he's not really playing all too well some nights. Oh, but he's still producing points, so he's still pretty all right. I've been super critical of this guy for sure. I know that. Now, a lot of it has to do with the fact that we know that Miller can be one of the best players on the Vancouver Canucks night in and night out. It's just... There were some moments throughout this season where we saw a little bit of a different side of him, and as a result, it pushed up some reasons to be concerned, in my opinion at least, which is why we talked about him this way a ton. But after yesterday's press conference, JT Miller proved himself as still that big leadership figure in the locker room that I have no doubt has a whole bunch of other Vancouver Canucks rallying behind him because this guy is not the hero the Vancouver Canucks deserve, but it's the one that they need. What is up, viewer out there watching Villarx back here. Today we're talking about JT Miller, his press conference yesterday. I'm recording this video the night of Wednesday, April 14th. It's actually Thursday, April 15th, 12.58 a.m., so it's past midnight. This video is going to be uploaded in about nine hours-ish from now. And who knows, by the time this video is finished up recording to the time it publishes on YouTube, there might be some big, big changes with the Vancouver Canucks 2021 season's end, and we will have to make an update about that once that does happen. But today I wanted to talk about what could be the biggest catalyst, if there is any change, as to how that came about. And all that has to do with one guy whom I've been super critical about, but who has probably made one of the biggest, most impactful Vancouver Canucks press conferences we've had in a very long time to the media yesterday. And the fact that all the quotes were being posted by the Vancouver Canucks social media, the full interview was out there as well, kind of signals to me by proxy that JT Miller is not the only guy who believes this thoroughly and that there are probably many people behind the scenes who kind of have the same opinion. So what are we talking about? We're talking about the Vancouver Canucks and their season. As everybody kind of knows, they paused everything up. They stopped playing for a few weeks because we had ourselves a very, very long list of positive cases amongst the hockey team. Well, some of those names are starting to come off the NHL's protocol list. And as a result, the past few days have seen the Vancouver Canucks start up their practices while they still have some other guys who are in protocol, but the way the season is supposed to be laid out, we had ourselves what was, I think, two practice periods, one on the 14th, one on the 15th, and then... Boom! Tomorrow, straight away, Connor McDavid, Leon Dreisaitl versus Edmonton. And then the next day, boom! Matthews and Marner in Toronto. Okay, cool. And then you have yourselves a schedule which has a one-day break, then they play Toronto, then another day break, and then they play Calgary and Ottawa back-to-back. -back. A day break, Ottawa. A day break, Ottawa. A day break, Ottawa, Toronto, back-to-back. -back. And you had this back-to-back, -back, day break, day break, back-to-back, -back, day break, back-to-back -back schedule going on for the next few weeks. 19 hockey games in 31 days. And for a hockey team of guys who have not all had the same kind of encounter with the virus, some of them having to get IVs and others just completely taking two weeks off because you can't do anything isolated in your basement for an extended amount of time, and you put yourselves in a position where after two practices, two practice periods, just a few days after getting off the protocol list, boom, 19 games in 31 days. One of the players who had not actually been tested positive this entire time was JT Miller, the guy whom we acquired in the trade a few years ago. He had himself a long interview, and some of the quotes have been compiled and posted onto this Reddit post on the Arcanox subreddit by Slippery Soup, and I wanted to read... All of them here. Yeah, all of them. Let's do it. So, JT Miller says about going back and playing 19 games in 31 days after his team takes a few weeks off, firstly recovering from a virus, and secondly, not actually doing anything, I don't feel ready at all. I was fortunate to not get sick, but you feel for your teammates. I've kind of felt guilt here and there, and all I could think about was how do we stay healthy out of all this? I want to make sure everyone and their family stay healthy. I haven't really thought about hockey much, but it's kind of crazy. I know everyone has a job to do, but to expect our entire team to be ready to play in one practice and a pregame skate is a bit hard to comprehend. 
even for me, sitting around and not doing much, my lungs right now are screaming. It's frustrating. We try to talk about our number one priority being our players' health and their family safety, and it's impossible to achieve that with what we're being asked to do. What we're being asked to do is not too safe, if you're asking me. He is asked bluntly, should you be playing? And he says, I don't want to be caught agreeing with you, but there's a lot of moving parts. I don't know. It's unfortunate that we're even in a scenario like this. This has nothing to do with hockey. To be brutally honest, we're going to need more time than this to come back and play hockey. Even the guys that didn't get it aren't ready. This is hard for me and those of us that didn't get the virus, said Miller, because he's thinking about how much worse it would be for his teammates that test positive and those that are struggling to breathe going up and down the steps. I'm just worried about our team's safety. I hope people don't take this the wrong way. I'm a super competitive guy, but this isn't about hockey for our team. This is about health and safety for our players, our families, and their children. This isn't about making the playoffs. It's dangerous to a lot of our players. We're going to need more time to get ready and play hockey, JT Miller says. It seems like a very high hurdle to jump over to play 19 games in a month. And you know what? There are going to be a lot of people going out there and saying, wow, you're a pro athlete. Come on, suck it up. You guys are getting paid millions of dollars to go out there and play. So play, bud, play. And I get it. There's totally a rationale that exists behind that argument. But the thing is, at the end of the day, whether you're a super athletic freak of a teenager like a Quinn Hughes is, or you're an early 30s guy with a family like an Alex Edler, this thing affects our bodies differently. Some people don't even feel it. They're asymptomatic. Others have heavy flu-like symptoms. Others need IVs like Quinn Hughes, for example. We have ourselves, if we want to stick to hockey, the most extreme case that I can think of right now, Marco Rossi. Marco Rossi was a top prospect out of the 2020 draft, and one of the most talented, skilled hockey players in that entire draft. I thought he could have gone third overall behind Byfield and Lafreniere if a team really wanted him to. This guy hasn't played a hockey game in months, and it doesn't look like he's going to play a hockey game in even more months because he's been having such terrible complications in rebounding from actually getting the virus himself. And the thing is, if you're in a position where just one player on the Canucks has a similar, if not even more serious kind of fate, playing 19 hockey games in 31 days can be absolutely terrible. Marco Rossi is just an outlying example. The guy's a teenager, he's 19, and you know how teenagers, their bodies are a lot better at recuperating and fixing themselves up than, let's say, the early 30s guys like the Alex Edlers and all that. So to dismiss the entire notion of safety and just saying, oh, play the games, play the games, come on. It's unfair not only to the players who have had it, but also to the ones that haven't had it and have just been sitting around at home for two weeks because you can't do anything with the entire team infected and you can't go to the rink, you can't do this, you can't do that. You're just sticking around because you don't want to get it yourself. You don't want to expose anybody. And you've been on your behind for two weeks. What's going to happen when you have one practice, a pregame skate, and you start to play Connor McDavid and Dreisaitl? Huh? That's going to be terrible. And with 19 games in 31 days, the Vancouver Canucks were put in a position where their reclamation point to the season was absolutely brutal. And so now, we had ourselves Friedman coming out with an article talking about JT Miller's comments because these comments were huge. They kind of blew up the entire city over here. The fact that, firstly, things can change. Something that is true now may not be true in 10 minutes, and as we've learned over and over again during the pandemic, one thing the players might not like, hey, Friday's game against Edmonton, it starts at 6 p.m., and then the next day, Saturday, against Toronto is 22 hours later, not even a full day's break? Yeah, that's really brutal. Next up, as of 5 p.m. Pacific Standard Time Wednesday, no Canucks player has opted out. One thing we don't publicly know, however, is the health of the coaching staff. Remember, Travis Green also got the thing too. Here's a third note from Elliot Friedman from the article, and this is from the Reddit post in the comments. The biggest surprise about Miller's comments is that the schedule was put together in consultation with the NHL, the NHL Players Association, and the Vancouver Canucks. Medical pros from all three sides were involved. There should be multilateral agreement on the correct path. Clearly, Miller is not being bought what is sold to him. And with the extended ideas from Thomas Strance, for example, that indicate that some other Canucks are feeling the same way that Miller is feeling, 
not necessarily that they don't want to play, but that the schedule they have to play is way too compact. It leads to me believing that a lot of the rescheduling did not really happen with the actual consultations of the players themselves. Here's a big point, probably the biggest one in the entire video so far, from the Friedman article. He went and compared Vancouver's situation to others. Montreal was out a week. They practiced a day, and then they played. Minnesota was out nine days, practiced for three days, and returned with a lineup that included a whole bunch of other guys that weren't playing before. Kalen Addison, Matt Barkowski, by the way, hello to Matt Barkowski, Vancouver Canucks tank commanding legend, Louis Balpedio, Gerald Mayhew, and Dakota Mermis as well. New Jersey, which had a bad outbreak, was off for 14 days. They practiced for one, and then they played. Maybe everybody's drawing a comparison there, but it's basically been three weeks for Vancouver, and it's been conceded that those who suffered symptoms among the Canucks had the worst ride of any outbreak amongst any of the NHL teams. It's not just about being cleared to play, it's also about how long it takes your body to recover. Remember, we've got this Brazilian P1 variant coming over here. The other NHL teams, yeah, they didn't have to deal with that. Sure, Dallas, New Jersey, Buffalo, they had their outbreaks and they came back, but it's not all the same. As we said, people's bodies react to things differently. And so yesterday in the evening, the Vancouver Canucks players had a Zoom call with the NHLPA, and we will get clarity tomorrow. Well, I'm recording this video the day it's going to be uploaded. So in a few hours from this video's recording time on where things stand for the resumption of games, if I were to interject here and just give my own opinions, why in the world are the Vancouver Canucks playing Ottawa four out of the six times when they get back here? The entire point of having Vancouver come back is so that they can figure out if they're good enough to make the playoffs. And how are they going to do that? Well, they're going to play games against Edmonton, against Toronto, against Winnipeg, against the teams that are actually going to be there too. If the Canucks can steal points from Edmonton and Toronto and Calgary, they might have a chance. But I don't know how necessary it is to force them to play games against Ottawa when you have two teams that are already down there in the standings. In fact, as Miller said, it's not about the playoffs. It's about actually confirming that your team is going to be fine to play. And with the way the schedule is put out, all the back-to-backs and one-day breaks, there's no two-day break in this entire stretch here. 19 games in 31 days after recovering from this thing that took them out for a while and not doing anything physically for two, three-ish weeks. Yeah, that's a huge adjustment. So I'm not really calling for this season to be cancelled or anything, and I'm not really too sure that's what the Canucks players want either. It's just acknowledging that what they have is too compact and giving the opportunity for that to potentially be extended or to have some of the less important games get taken out of the rotation here. Potentially not playing against Ottawa, because why do you need to play against Ottawa? If you want to make the playoffs, you're going to get there by playing Edmonton and beating Edmonton, by playing Toronto and beating Toronto. You're not going to get into the playoffs by beating Ottawa over and over again. So that's kind of my opinion about it. I didn't really want to make a video about this until something big happened, which actually has happened now. And now that we're 13 minutes into this, my goodness, we're in a spot where... The way things have gone down, I hope that by the time this video is uploaded, there is something that has been revealed and something has changed. If it doesn't, then okay. I mean, I'm just a guy here on YouTube. I'm not really an influence for anything. I'm just kind of giving my opinion here. But yeah, talk to me in the comments what you think as well. And because it's been a very long video, please let me know in the comments if you made it to the end by talking about the Anaheim Ducks. Because when I think of JT Miller, I think of other Canucks named Miller. Ryan Miller comes to mind. He's a goalie for Anaheim. So yeah, tell me in the comments, Anaheim Ducks, if you made it to the end for a chance to be featured in the next Vancouver Canucks discussion-based video. But yeah, I can't believe we got this far. 14 minutes now. Crazy. Talk to me in the comments what you think about the Canucks. We'll leave an update in the comments if anything has changed. And I hope you enjoyed this video. And bye. <laughs>